Good afternoon and thank you for joining us this afternoon for this session looking at flexible bus service data in bus open data service. I'm Tim Rivett. I've been working with the Department of Transport to help develop the approach to data handling for flexible bus services. Um, we are recording this and we'll circulate a link to attendees uh, afterwards uh, in a couple of days once it's been processed um, and uh, it'll have a link on the PTIC website where all the rest of the flexible bus service data is of uh, documents and things like that are available. So. Um, why do we need to do something different to for flexible bus services? Um, because um, BODS, as it currently stands, uh, is all about fixed route and fixed timetables. So the, the sort of typical service that goes from A to B and shuttling backwards and forwards to a, uh, to a published timetable. Um, but over the last few years, we've seen more and more uh, flexible services, non-fixed route, non-fixed timetable uh, services and a combination of them um, appearing more and more um, and therefore um, becoming more and more of a core network for authorities and the uh, fact that they're not on BODS is beginning to uh, be seen as as an issue. Um, a couple of years ago now, KPMG carried out a discovery project to scope the requirements and look at uh, what people thought and whether people thought that they should be available in uh, BODS. Um, and the outcome of that was that, yes, absolutely, it should be, because if you just take the BODS data as it currently stands and put it into a journey planner, quite a lot of the country would look as though it had no public transport, when in fact it did. Um, and more and more, as I said, uh, services are appearing, rural funding, bus service improvement plans, they're all resulting in more and more of these sort of services uh, appearing um, and we need people to be using them because if they're not, then they can be quite expensive to run. One of the challenges that uh, flexible services as we're calling them from BOD's perspective, as is that actually there is no one definition of what a flexible service is. Sometimes they're called flexible services, sometimes they're called demand responsive, dial a ride, on demand, flexi bus, Uber style, dial and ride. There's as many names and, and approaches to defining them as there are schemes. But fundamentally, they all are either um, totally flexible or they're part fixed, part flexible. Um, they've got a bit of a they've a fixed route, or they you know, and they only run when somebody's booked it, um, or you know, um, a combination and a variation of of those. And so um, we can by doing some analysis, uh, identify the common themes amongst these to work out how they can be represented in data for people to consume it into journey planners and the public to understand what's going on. Um, one of the things that is often required is advanced booking. Um, but again, there's as many different approaches to this as there are service types. Uh, some you have to book a couple of days in advance. Some you can uh, book, you know, pretty much as you might a taxi, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes in advance. Sometimes you can reoccur bookings, sometimes you can't. And 
um, the way that you have to book um, varies as well. Uh, lots of phone services, some email, a lot of web and app, and even there's one that accepts postal bookings. Um, and sometimes some of these services, you have to be on a previous journey or getting on uh, at the start to say, can you take me to somewhere? Um, or can you pick me up from uh, somewhere which the journey wouldn't otherwise go to unless you'd ask the driver? So the challenge that BODS started out with was that uh, there's no agreed approach to how to present this data at the moment. So understandably, people that have these services and are wanting to publicise them and present them in uh, journey planners and things like that for people that are consuming BODS data, um, uh, they've, they've taken a number of approaches based on what they thought was appropriate for what they were doing. So a lot of the time we've got sample or notional timetables. So somebody's put in uh, all of the potential stops in an order and put a time to them um, and um, then put in some notes that says, you know, it's got to be booked in advance, only runs if it's been booked, um, times are approximate, that sort of thing. Uh, one of the challenges that this triggers is that because notes are often not presented, and that's something that BODS itself actually um, encourages, is not to use notes, and so consumers will often uh, ignore them because there were so many notes being presented in a lot of um, data sets previous to BODS that actually it's really hard for a journey planner to understand what's going on um, and somebody consuming it because you have to look at all these notes and understand them. So quite often notes aren't presented in customer facing systems and for people where they were putting in a notional timetable, the journey planner went, aha, I understand how to do a timetable and it would present that as though it was an actual um service that was going to be there and there are examples of people standing at a bus stop uh waiting for a bus that's never going to come because they've not been able to see the fact that you've got to book it in advance so um what um happened um then was um we went through a process of defining well what are some of the criteria for flexible bus services that we want to be able to handle um and really it comes down to a service that is registrable with the traffic commissioner as a flexible service so that's what we started out to try and solve but because there's such a wide variation uh, in what's registerable as a flexible service, um, pretty much any other type of demand responsive or, or other um, flexible service in some way is supported. Um, there may be one or two out there that have got particularly unusual forms of operation um, that we can't support, but we think we've covered pretty much everything that we've um well we've we cover everything that we've come across in the work that we've been doing looking at the ways that people are operating things but there might be one out there that uh we haven't found and um doesn't quite work but if that's the case and you can't work out how to uh code it and and provide it feel free to get in touch and and uh and i can work through uh, how we can overcome that. So um, where we've ended up is with a very simple set of data that is required um, because there are so many variations and a lot of these organisations that are running these, particularly community transport and demand responsive, they're not necessarily the most uh, tech savvy they don't have a lot of resources so what we've done is distill it down to what is the minimum that we need and basically that is 
where does the service cover you know either stops or or zones and we'll come on to that uh, a bit more in a bit um when it operates you know monday to friday 7 a.m to 7 p.m or you know eight till 12 and two till four or, or whatever and then how do you book it uh, is it app is it telephone uh, is it web um how, how can somebody book this sort of service um what we've been looking at is the the planned aspect of this um so the timetable for want of a an, uh, another word um bods support other sorts of data so it supports location data you know where is the bus now um so that you can create a countdown time a predicted time um bods is not expecting um flexible service providers to provide location data because we're not quite sure what the benefit of that is at the moment um from a fares point of view the work that's been done um in netex uh supports uh flexible service type fares because they you know uh, they're, they're either distance based or, or fixed price or those, you know one of the things that's already been supported so if you want to provide fares data then um, have a look at the fares stuff that bods is doing but you know location data don't worry about that for now so i've already said that there's lots of different types of services out there um which ones have we been looking at and which ones um, in principle are supported by what we've done um, so that the most basic uh, flexible zone there's a service that you can book and it will take you from a point uh, to another point in a geographic area um, and you can um, identify that as a polygon it doesn't have to be a square or a triangle or anything you know you can make it follow county boundaries or road networks or, or whatever it is but fundamentally flexible zone anywhere to anywhere within that um, then um, many to one so there are services out there that will take people from um a train station into a village or a, or an area around um that train station or into a shopping center and back again that sort of thing so that's a sort of um one to um uh many but also many to many so there's some out there that will go you know will take people to the shopping center and the train station um and all those variations around that there are ones out there that will take you from anywhere to anywhere across multiple zones and to fixed points in towns. So um, in Lincolnshire, for example, there are some that will drop you off in, in identified places in, in Lincoln and then take people into the, into the villages on the, uh, on the outskirts. Uh, they're covered. Um, and um there are services out there that part of the route is fixed uh and operates to a timetable and then there'll be a bit of it beginning end or middle where it'll go off and do something if people need it and have booked it um and they're sorted um and there are some uh, and we deal with these a little bit differently um to all the others um, where it'll just go up, nip off into a, into a village if somebody's got on the bus and says take me to um, you know, the, the little village please um, but it won't go there unless somebody's asked the driver um, so there's we, we deal with that one slightly differently so what have we done um, what well, we've produced a technical profile it's an addition and sits on top of the current bus service open data um, trans exchange profile and it builds on uh, the work in that profile and relies a lot on 
the the concepts within that um and adjusts it and adds some bits in that are specific to uh, flexible services so if you're going to have a look at this and try and understand uh, if you're a supplier for example or, or into um you know how these this data is structured you'll need to look at the uh, flexible service profile in conjunction with uh, the the normal bod service profile um, at some point when that profile gets updated this will merge into it and it'll replace chapter 10 which at the moment says we'll deal with flexible services later well this is the later um, and the aim of the document is to provide suppliers with the technical uh, understanding to be able to uh, support it in their timetabling systems um, that you might use to, to create timetables um, and for people consuming the data to know how to present it properly um, because it's no good if you produce the data and people that are giving it to the public don't understand how to do it properly so what are the um, requirements within this profile what what do you need to be um, providing um, i've said we've we've made it as simple as possible um, i will get a little bit technical at points here um, so uh, warning for those of you that uh, that like to uh, to sit at a higher level um, Within Trans Exchange, you can classify services in a number of ways. A standard service, the fixed route, fixed timetable for BODs, you don't need to do anything. The automatic assumption is that it's a, it's a um, normal stopping service. Um, but if you've got flexible um, service or you've got a bit of flexible in there, um, you need to be um, uh, letting people know through the service classification and saying it's flexible why did that not go forward there we go we'll try that way um so um fundamentally the the data that you need to provide the structure of the data that you're providing uh, as part of a flexible service is pretty similar to a standard service type. Um, for a, a standard service, you'd have a journey pattern. For flexible services, you have a flexible journey pattern. Um, and you know, pretty much all of the things that you would need to provide, you know, what the stops are and, and things like that, um, they're all there. How you piece the journey together is all there. It just tends to have a flexible at the start of the data structure. Um, so you provide um, flexible journey patterns rather than just journey patterns. Um, a key point to note is that um, BODS is based on Trans Exchange version 2.4. Um, earlier versions of Trans Exchange uh, had a way of identifying the stops and the areas that a flexible service would use um, that um, is um, not the approach that we're taking we're using the the newer um, uh, use of, uh, of of stops and the way to uh, identify those um, and the older um, flexible zone and fixed stop points are depreciated in Trans Exchange 2.4. So the structures are there, but we're not using them because um, at some point, um, if BODS moves on from Trans Exchange 2.4 to 2.5 or to NetEx, uh, those depreciated structures aren't supported. And so, uh, given not many people have. Um, develop the uh, the tools to, to create this data um, yet uh, we may as well start off with the longer term solution rather than doing something that we're going to have to uh, get rid of 
um, in a little bit. So you need to be using the new um, structures for stops. Um, sorry for the XML, but if you've not seen Trans Exchange, this is the sort of thing that you would see if you open a Trans Exchange file, phrases like this. Um, at the most basic level, um, if you have just got a single zone of operation and you're just picking up and dropping off within that uh, on demand, um, all you need is a single uh, flexible stop um, which references the NAPTAN uh, flexible zone. Um, and that's the key thing is that um, you can use um, stops that are marks that you might have in NAPTAN um, that a normal service might use. You also, um, for zones, have a type of stop in NAPTAN called an FLX, a flexible stop, which actually refers to the polygon that you might um, use. So you, for an FLX, stop you might you you have a single naptan number bar um rather than that being a point that's a polygon and so you can draw that as a as a shape whatever the the zone that you're operating in um if you have a service that is flexible but does some things in a particular order uh, uh, in this case um it will always start off at the Washingborough shop and then go to the Washingborough church. Then it goes to Nettleham, which is a, uh, is, is a zone um, and it'll do whatever it's going to do there. And it ends up um, in uh, Hayington, um, which is a point. Then um, you can specify that by um, setting a sequence number so that even though this would only ever run um, if somebody has booked it it will do things in this order um, you can specify that so you've you've said where it's operating um, and if there's any order to that you then how do people book that um, well uh, there's a structure for uh, providing that information for BODs, you have to provide one of, you know, you've either got to have a phone number or an email address, a postal address or a web address. Um, unfortunately, um, because Trans Exchange was developed a number of years ago, um, support for um, for example, if you're an app based service where you need to where you've got an app for Apple devices and another one for Android, um, you can't have more than one um, link to a uh, to a URL. Um, so you would need to have a web page that goes if you're Android, here's the link if you're all you know apple here's the link for you and um everybody's um service that we've looked at um has had a web page like that that has that and so we don't see that as a problem um although it is a a bit of a limitation um, but uh, easily overcome so you've got to provide one of that um and uh, by default you're going to take all of the bookings um if the service only takes people that meet a particular criteria. So uh, typically that might be a, um, a community transport organisation that only takes people that have got mobility uh, challenges, can't use a normal bus service, then you can say, no, I don't take all bookings. Um, and then journey planners will understand that, you know, somebody's got to meet some criteria to be able to get it. So you've said where it's operating. You've said how it's being booked. When is it operating? You can um, specify um, using the same structures for um, as you do for a normal service. You know, you can say it doesn't operate on uh, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, 
but it does operate on May Bank Holiday and uh, and New Year's Eve and, and those sort of things. And you can say, um, uh, in that service period, it operates, you know, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 2 till 4, or it's all day, whatever it is. Um, and you can specify that because, of course, you haven't got a timetable. Um, so you have to set those parameters, you know, what are the hours that it operates? Um, and you can have different periods of operation for different days of the week. You know, you might operate longer hours during the weekday and shorter hours at the weekend, for example. Um, and so all of that's specifiable in the in the vehicle journey aspect of it. Uh, one of the types of services it's worth uh, bringing out specifically uh, is where you've got um, a mix of fixed and flexible service. Um, and uh, that might be at the start or the end or the middle. Um, well, the BODS profile that people are already familiar with sorts out how you do the fixed route fixed timetable elements um and in the example of here from one of the called connect services um there's a bit in the middle where it goes off into a demand responsive area and does what it's going to do and then it goes back so it's in the middle what you do there is you need to um include your normal fixed route and fixed timetable you need to include the flexible service bit um, within Trans Exchange with all the how you book and, and stuff that we've been through. Um, and you can link those two bits together um, using interchange, which is documented in the uh, in the normal um, BODS profile um, document. Um, and so you can, you know, so you can link that through with without any interchange penalty. So people know that or journey planners know, you know, they, you don't have to throw somebody off and get on the next one. You know, they can sit on it and do whatever they're going to do. Um, so you can cope with that by doing a bit of both and joining it together. Um, the bit that we've had to deal with um, a bit separately and a bit differently um, is on demand stops. So this is where, for example, um, in this one, um, you've got a journey, the 11.55 that starts and it gets to Easton, but it's going to skip Sherston um, unless um, required to set down for passengers already on the bus. So they've, you know, they've got on, they said, I want to go to Sherston. It's only going to go there if somebody's asked for it to go there. Um, Yes, you could deal with this in the same way that you could deal with um, the mix of fixed and flexible, but it seems quite a lot of effort for uh, the odd stop um, here and there when actually um, what we can do is we can deal with it uh, more easily um, by amending the way that Trans Exchange currently works. So the way that it's currently um, done in these um, is uh, in, in Trans Exchange at the moment is um, people will say, well, it's set down only. So this activity element at a bus stop um, and they'll put a note in that says set down only you know, you've got to request it from the driver. Um, again, you have the challenge of if somebody's not presenting the notes properly um, to people um, and the BODS profile um, encourages people not to, um, you've got a problem. Now, a lot of journey planners um, and services like Google Maps and Apple and Microsoft and, and things like that um, do a conversion into um, a data format called GTFS. Um, GTFS does actually understand how to um, handle um, you know, you've got to coordinate with the driver. You've got to ask the driver um, to be picked up or to be dropped off at a particular stop. Um, but 
the way that um, you can convert the BODS Trans Exchange data into GTFS because it, G, the Trans Exchange doesn't have that way of handling it. The GTFS, which a lot of people are using, um, can't understand that because it just doesn't have enough information. And so what we um, have done is we've made an amendment to um, the Trans Exchange schema so that the core data structures in which this uh, you, you structure timetable data. Um, so we've added um, three types of um, activity at a stop, pick up driver request, set down driver request, pick up and set down driver request. So this is a change. System suppliers are going to have to um, amend drop down boxes and things like that to support it. But for these services and there's surprising number of them um actually when you when you look um it's much easier than going oh there's a flexible bit here and i've got to put all this bit together um because actually most of it is just you know it's a bit heavy-handed for um for these um types of things so um we're amending uh trans exchange to support that to make it easier for people um, and so um, what are the um, next steps um, from here? Um, so we've got an adoption challenge. Um, Lee's put in the chat, interchanges aren't currently supported by some software providers. Um, yep, um, some of them don't support flexible services at the moment. So there's a lot of conversations going on over the next few months to uh, encourage them to be supporting this. And if you've got a flexible service and you use software from supplier, whatever it is, then uh, have those conversations, encourage them to support your requirements. Um, and if they uh, want to know more, have chat with me then get them to get in contact with me contact details are going to be at the end um so yes there is an adoption challenge um and there's work to be done with the data consumers as well to make sure that um you know they're ready for when data starts to flow um for authorities some of you have already got flexible zones set up um but um there's a lot of authorities that have flexible services operating where we can't see any flx stop types um in that town at the moment um and so there's some work to do to create stops before operators can create the data um and uh, and so um uh, if you're an authority, expect some conversations with with your operators. Um, but you probably know where these are operating now. And so actually you could proactively um, go out and create these in your uh, NATAN software so that they're ready for the operators. Um, and um, we've been working with the uh, with the NATAN team um, on preparations for uh, FLX. Um, they had a couple of recent sessions on it with um, people of recordings for that available on the NAPTAN YouTube channel. Um, if you're interested in those conversations that were going on. Um, BODS is um, underway with the design and things like that. You might have seen these before in one of the previous sessions that we did as part of the consultation and things like that but um, uh, they've got ways of presenting the zones now. So, to, you know, so you can see where the operation is. They've got validation work going on for the, some test data to make sure that think data is flowing properly and being recognized properly. Um, in terms of timescales for when um people are going to be expected to be providing this there's a load of discussions to happen yet but um the current thinking is that in early 2024 um bods will go if you've got a service that's got a flexible zone in it 
then we're going to expect you to be providing it um, as a flexible service rather than as a standard service. Um, and so there'll be a process of compliance and conversations. And some of those are happening already. Uh, a number of operators have had conversations with the uh, with the BODS um, business change team already going, we can see you're using flexible stops. Is this, you know, right? Um, in which case have you seen this work? Um, and uh, are you going to prepare for it? Or, oh, no, that's a mistake. We should have chosen a bus stop rather than a zone. Um, and so uh, those conversations are happening already. Um, for more information, um, once the um, BODS stuff is, the um, application is updated, the, the 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 guidance will appear on the BODS web pages. The two are inextricably linked in, in the DFT release cycle uh, approach. But in the meantime, um, there's a page with all of the information on with the document, um, with links to the um, sessions we did um, as part of the consultation. The, the recording for this will go on there, um, so you can go and grab that now from the uh from the ptic website um and so at that point i'm gonna ask the people got any questions um so there's one from um matt any am i aware of any example services using that format that are published to bods today no, I'm not. People are publishing theoretical or, you know, notional timetables with notes. Um, over the next couple of weeks, there'll be some examples, services um, going on to the PTIC website that you'll be able to download um, and have a look at and test if you're a, a data consumer. Um, so, are we working with systems that ingest this data journey planners to ensure they successfully convert? Yeah, and we know, yeah, absolutely we do. Um, uh, and um, we know that quite a lot of um, data consumers can understand flexible zones and how to present that. The, the the conversations that we're having with the journey planner suppliers um is um they need to have some thought about how best to present this to customers so that they don't go oh that's too hard um for me to you know work out i can it's saying i can get from a to b but i have to do something different so i'm gonna not bother with that so how do we best present this to customers in a way that they understand that they need to book and easily understand you know what that phone number is for example um and um yeah tim there'll be some samples um very soon um is there any coordination with mobility data um to ensure these concepts can also be represented in future iterations of gtfs so um i've got I've got conversations going on at a European level about these sort of services and presentation and um, support cross standards. So, yes, I do, but not at a UK level. It's at a European level. Um, so hopefully that will make sure that that works fine. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people have got a lot of work to do to to work out how to properly present flexible zones. Some people cope with it now. Some people don't. Um, so we'll be there for a tool for scheduling systems to create zones. So zones are something that you create in NAPTAN. So that's a local authority thing rather than a um, operator. Um, Thing, a bit like a normal bus stop, for example. Um, you know, the authority creates that, um, and um, a lot of authorities already have the ability to do this. Um, 
so have a conversation with your authorities that you're operating in um and um they should be able to help you um if not get them to talk to the uh, to the naptan team um like from an operator perspective do you know if scheduled software suppliers such as entropies will be able to handle the changes so we've got those conversations going on we can have them i can have them at a at a level but um it's quite a different set of conversations if you're actually a customer with them and going i want you to support this please um so you know i have conversations with them at a theoretical level turning that into um product that people can use um could do with some um customers knocking on the door um and that will encourage them right we've got some hands up so i'll go to those chris Yeah, good afternoon, Tim. Um, firstly, thank you very much indeed. This is probably one of the best sessions I think I've ever been to uh, working through this type of thing. Um, so no, full credit for that. It's been very, very useful. So thank you. Um, a question really for um, suppliers, perhaps it's more on the BOD side of things, but as a as a bus operator, we already have a sort of automated feed from our ticketer system into the BODs portal. Is Has it been scoped out for us to be able to provide sort of simultaneous updates from the ticket system and a, another system which we might choose to use to provide transit exchange data for a, um, a, a flexible service which we would manage in a completely different system simultaneously. So there's nothing to stop you having um, multiple data sets in BODs. So if big groups already publish um, you know, multiple data sets to BODs. They don't have a single data set for all of their operations. So that's already supported and well understood in the BODs thing. You just need to create another data feed in BODs um, and you should have that already available to you. Yeah, that's a very good way around it. Thank you. Uh, Lee. Uh, thank you. I've, I've got loads of question so I'm, I'm just going to be a little bit choosy um one thing i was going to say um is that quite often flexible services or services that should be registered as flexible services get registered using ordinary paperwork for a normal service um so the otc aren't always rigorous in picking up on that so you're going to have a challenge trying to work out exactly what is a flexible service and what isn't um by looking at the otc records um yeah. Another point I was going to make was that a, a lot of the ones that are kind of one uh, many to one or, or many to many, that includes an example timetable, either as part of the registration or on their website. So they're actually operating the service with a lot more structure than the registration would would appear that it's officially it's fully flexible. But in practice, it isn't. The problem we've got is that we try to show the more structured um operation in our data but there's no requirement on the operators to actually update the traffic commissioner so they they may say that it's a fully flexible service but it runs at nine o'clock in the morning on you know and goes to colchester so we'll show that but then they might change it to 10 o'clock and they don't have to tell us so th that's that's an issue um and my other point which is my main point really is won't most operators who are running these kind of flexible services be out of scope for BODs because a lot of them will be Section 22? Yep. So there is no mandation for people to supply flexible service data if it's not registered to BODs. Um, and some of them won't. But the, the feedback from the work a couple of years ago and for the conversations that we've been having this year as we've been developing this from authorities is we regard a lot of these services as core network and so we need them to be in um you know the city mappers and the googles of this world so cus potential customers know that there's some service there and it's just not a black hole um and so yeah there isn't a mandation for a lot of these but um i know that a good number of authorities will be encouraging those operators to supply this data or they'll be doing it 
themselves sort of as a bureau type service because it's really important for them to have them displayed because it's such a core part of their um of their network um and uh and so uh you know sh short of legislation change you can't mandate this um but i expect an awful lot of them to be appearing over the next sort of 12 months in bods because they're so important for a network um and uh you know, if people don't know about it people aren't going to use them and they're going to fail mm. um which uh, nobody wants um going back to um the um you know yes a lot of these because they're flexible you don't need to tell the um traffic commissioner um about changes um and yeah because of regular bookings and things like that a lot of them end up as sort of a fixed dish timetable um you know that's there is a choice for people to make if they're if they are running pretty much to a timetable about whether they present it as a timetable as though they would a standard service or whether they leave it as flexible because they would actually do something different if people booked um and that is entirely up to the operators um but they're gonna have to keep it up to date otherwise they're gonna be presenting the wrong picture to people and and giving a wrong sense of um availability of a, of a service um so you know operators are mm. going to have to think about that a little bit i don't know how we overcome that i've given it a fair bit of thought over the last few months um just sorry quickly to one last point um with the challenges of get the, the whole ethos of bods is that you create the data and it gets used by whoever wants to use it so it's it's there for any third party um journey planner to to use that data but that does create a massive challenge in the sense that you've then got to police all of those data users to make sure they're using it correctly which is probably an impossible task so does it not suggest that there should be a single Obviously, everyone should be able to do a journey plan if they want, but there should also be a single BODS journey planner, a national bus inquiries like we have national rail inquiries, where everything is very, very um, rigorously um, checked to make sure that everything's been presented in the correct way. And then, you know, you've got a gold standard journey planner that everyone can refer to. Yeah. Um that is a uh, a reasonable comment to make. It's not one that I'm in a position to uh, answer. Uh, if there was somebody from Traveline on the call, um, then I'm sure they'd go, well, we sort of provide that already at a national level. Um, and a lot of people look to that as, as the standard to compare other things to. Um, but, uh, you know, um, uh, I'm sure that... Uh, people from the dft will be uh uh listening to this uh later and uh, and might pick up on that um so let's go back to um the chat um oh, claire can complex examples be provided that join a journey pattern and flexible journey thus interchanging xml uh, yep absolutely um there's going to be an example of that um in the set of examples provided um from your discussions with operators are ct operators in a position to provide trans exchange data even if it's a simplified one i'll pick up wayne's comment about what about somebody without scheduling systems so um a lot of the very small organizations um don't have a scheduling tool per se um, and won't be able to provide this. Um, a lot of the authorities that we've talked to um, have said, yeah, we know that our, our CT operators and flexible service operators don't have the tools to do this, but we do. And so we can provide it for them. And there's more of a willingness to do that in the conversations that I've had for these type of services because they just 
don't change on a regular basis you know once you've set up the zones and said you know it operates nine till four or whatever um that's going to carry on until um uh you know a contract changes probably um unlike a timetable where there's particularly if you've got operational data in there you know running boards and things like that there's a lot more change and a lot more work so i'm expecting quite a lot of this data to be provided by authorities um for those people that use some of the app based providers and things like that um we've had conversations with those companies and they're going yeah that's, we we ought to be able to provide this data um for our customers and so sometimes it'll be the supply going yeah we know what the area is we know the hours of operation we know how to book and so it's quite easy for them to uh to to provide that and if it's a really simple form of flexible service um people will be able to take the trans exchange open it up in a text editor edit the bits that need editing and and uh, and Bob's your uncle um, if you've got you know a bit of technical uh, nous um, and um, question from Mike is there any expectation that real-time location data should be provided into bods for flexible services so no there isn't um, we had quite a lot of conversations early on um, about this and um the conclusion is that actually we're not sure how useful um this is in a um unconstrained system like bods you know with because if you're stood on a street and you can see a bus moving around you know a flexible service moving around it might be on the street next to you and you go aha i'll go and stand out and wait for it well, it might actually be half an hour before it gets to you because it's going to go off and do all sorts of things. And so it's not particularly useful and it's almost impossible to create an accurate prediction um, in a standardised way. Some of the apps and things like that might well be doing it, but, you know, not ubiquitous enough um, to be able to specify it for uh, BODs. But that's not to stop somebody doing it. Um, if they really want to um and you add what are the time scales for introducing this so um bods is talking to people about this at the moment but um early next year um we were i'm would be expecting them to be in a place where it's a if you're going to provide data about a flexible service we're going to expect it in this format rather than as a standard service that uses a flexible zone for example so you know sometime early next year it depends on you know the supply chain how long some of the suppliers take to um, update software and things like that which is why there's a bit of um, you know um, uncertainty around that but that's certainly the, uh, the 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 aim that i think we're we're going for if people can do it now then feel free to do it now it's not going to be rejected by bots and it might make some good examples okay any more questions from anybody uh so one from lee if a fixed route and timetable has a couple of on-demand sections in the middle this can affect the times towards the end of the route this makes it impossible to assign a time to the stops towards the end of the route yeah in which case uh that's pretty much a flexible service that's visiting stops in a particular order um which is uh supported um in the in the structures so, Okay, um, in which case I will say thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, if you've got any more questions, if you've got suppliers that need to talk to me about things, um, then contact details are on screen. As I say, you'll get a link to the slides and the recording um, over the next couple of days. 
um, if you want to review what's been said. Thank you for your time this afternoon and have a good rest of the day.